What's up, y'all? I'm always here with the theater picks Chicagoans cannot stop talking about, and I got another show I want to put on y'all radar. Steppenwolf presents the world premiere of Purpose. It's a play about a fictional Chicago family that's been a pillar of black politics for generations, whose cracks, secrets, and petty dramas are, are starting to show and threaten the family. It's directed by Tony Award winner Felicia Rashad and written by Brandon Jacobs Jenkins, whose show Appropriate is currently killing it on Broadway. Purpose is funny and epic, and people loving it so much, the run was extended through April 28th. Luckily, tickets start at just $20 at Steppenwolf.org. That's Steppenwolf.org. Hey, everybody. Executive producer Simone Alisea here, just popping in with one last election update. On Friday evening, the Associated Press called the extremely tight Democratic primary race for Cook County State's attorney. Former appellate justice Eileen O'Neill Burke is the winner. Go back and check out our previous coverage of this race and make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter, Hey Chicago, for the latest updates. Find them both at chicago.citycast.fm. Now let's get to the show. Today on CityCast Chicago, it's the first of the month and you know what that means. Yes, it's time to pay that April rent. But in happier news, we're here with our guide to April. What we're looking forward to, things we're excited to eat, and a little monthly trivia. It's Monday, April 1st. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is what Chicago's talking about. I'm here with executive producer Simone Alisea. Good morning, Simone. Hey, Jacoby. We also got producer Michelle Navarro in the building. What's up, Michelle? What's up, Jacoby? I ain't out here complaining. If you're new to CityCast Chicago, every day of the week, we talking about the latest news, telling the coolest stories, but also finding the best ways to explore this great city of ours. And if you've been enjoying these monthly guys, we've been doing them for uh, the past few months, uh, or if you enjoy any of the news that we bring you every day, we hope that you'll consider becoming a member of CityCast Chicago. Yeah, this is really important, Jacoby. It's the thing that kind of helps us uh, like keep going, right? Is when we have <laughs> listeners who become members. Um, and what I love about it too is you like you get some really cool perks. I think ad-free listening is a really good one. It's why I am a member of some of my favorite podcasts. Um, and for a little more, you can get a shout out in the newsletter. And so you get to say when you become a member uh, that you know you help support your favorite podcast and newsletter, which I think is great. Support us. We really appreciate it. Sign up now at membership.citycast.fm slash Chicago. Go and do it now. All right, y'all. Uh, we're getting our week and month started on the same day, which I don't know. It's a little interesting because you, you want to head in Monday sort of, uh, but also it's the first day of the month. So, you know, you got things to look forward to. And I want to know what y'all looking forward to this April. Uh, so, uh, Michelle, what's on your list? Um, so something that I'm really looking forward to is the Chicago Latino Film Festival. It's presented by the International Latino Cultural Center of Chicago. It's running from April 11th to the 22nd, and it's showcasing films and shorts from 22 countries. There's regular screenings at the Landmark Century Center in Lakeview East, and general admission starts at $15, um, but you know, there's different rates depending on the show you want to check out. One that I'm looking forward to is actually the opening night gala on April 11th. They will be playing The Wing Walker, which is a film by Mexican director Alonso Alvarez Barreda at the Davis Theater. Uh, Alonso Alvarez Barreda also directed episodes from FX Snowfall, American Horror Stories and The Shy. So I'm excited to support and, and definitely check it out. No, I love that. Once you put me on this, I had to go look at their full lineup of movies. And one that jumped out to me was called Long Time No Sleep. It's supposed to be like a little bit of a remote romance, a little bit of a comedy of this guy who basically gets this anonymous, mysterious briefcase. And there are tons of people chasing after him. Um, they're make, It's making its North American premiere. It premiered in Argentina about two years ago. But people can see it uh, Tuesday, April 16th, as well as Thursday, April 18th. Uh, so, yeah, Long Time No Sleep. It looks like a good one. Another thing that I'm really excited about April is that it is 420. Hey, it's 422 times a day, every day, but I feel you. 
But it's the big 420, Jacoby. <laughs> it's the it's the overarching 420. That's very true. That's very true. 420 falls on a Saturday this year. I was looking at the weather too because it's Saturday and I'm planning in advance. Of course, I should not trust any weather that is 20 days out from now. But I'm going to stay optimistic. It looks like it's going to be 50. It's going to be sunny. So I will definitely be celebrating outside. Maybe my first bike ride of the year. Though mm. I do not uh, promote um, bike uh, riding. Biking under the influence. <laughs> biking under the influence or anything like that. I'm not saying none of that. Uh, but I will definitely, you know, maybe take a really nice leisurely walk on the lake. You know, do something outside. Chill under a tree while smoking some tree. Because why not? It's 420. I also have, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of deals and discounts at your local dispensaries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, check them out. That's what I was going to say. I'm actually moving like a block and a half away from uh grasshopper club which is a, a, a black owned dispensary and so I, I am looking forward to that i mean people should pay attention to our episodes throughout the month i am going to be dropping throughout our good news um little events here and there over the next couple of weeks and i know you said you can't trust the weather and last april was a testament to that we broke like a 137 year record last year when it got up to like 82 degrees on april 13th and you know what happened the next day or a couple days later and it snowed it snowed yeah, we got a little a little blanket. And so, yeah, you, you can't trust it. But there is likely going to be plenty of days for you to get out and bike. So make sure you check out our episode on how to buy a bike if you don't have one. But also make sure you look at our other episodes on great places to get out and enjoy Chicago's nature. Simone, we are at the top of the month. Of, means we got four weekends ahead of us with plenty of things to put on the calendar. What you looking forward to this month? So first up, I think uh, coming up very, very soon is we have a solar eclipse that is happening, guys. Like, it's a really, really big solar eclipse. I don't know if you guys got out or if you remembered um, the one that happened in 2017. No, you didn't see it? I did. I saw the it. And you said 2017, I already was not. No, I was just like, bro, ah. That was that was so far ago, but I, I definitely was. I don't know. I didn't have a solar eclipse enthusiast in my life at that point, like like I do now, and so I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so I remember going out for that one, and that one I remember. I think more of the United States was um, in the path of totality. This one, um, so for example, so the path of totality means like the full the sun will be totally covered, right? That you will see a full eclipse. Um, Chicago, for example, is not in the path of totality, but Southern Illinois, downstate Illinois, Carbondale, that area will be. Um, still up here, we're going to see a partial eclipse and there's lots of programming going on around it. Like obviously you can go down to the Adler and uh, check out, they've got lots of stuff and they have like the viewing glasses that you need to see it because it can hurt your eyes. Um, but also you can acquire those make your own literally step outside anywhere um you gonna make you, your own glasses uh I, I will probably pick some up from the adler i don't know i haven't decided yet i haven't figured it out okay <laughs> don't look up don't look up unless you have proper eye protection regular sunglasses won't do it but uh yeah i'll probably grab some and then quite literally just step outside my apartment i'm not going anywhere special for it but there we have seen like again in places like carbondale and downstate like there's been a lot of big like tourism pickup mm -hmm. for it uh, and like hotels are running, Paper are selling TV out man. and oh yeah. And like places like Indianapolis too, close by. Um, so yeah, if you were planning a trip um, and you haven't booked that yet, maybe consider your camping options. I don't know what to tell you. Like at this point, it's, it's, it's a little late, but hopefully you'll be able, if you're trying to, trying to see the total eclipse, hopefully you'll find a spot. So, be, so people don't get caught off guard. What day should they be not looking up? Not looking up. Long. Yeah, that's a great question, Jacoby. That is on April 8th, so a week from today. It, the peak of it will happen during the afternoon, so between like 1 okay. p.m. and uh, like 2.45-ish um, are sort of the the times to look out for. Can you kind of see like the moon slowly making its way over there? There's like the peak moment where you're going to see the most coverage, right? Which I think mm -hmm. is the part that everyone's excited for. But like if you wanted to hang out for... A couple hours in the middle of the day, you will see it kind of slowly move across and then move That's away. Um, and it's it's pretty cool. What's some other things you're excited for? You, I know you've been thinking about this solar eclipse now for the last few weeks. What are some other things uh, you're excited for? 
Right. So that's at the beginning of the month. Something else, um, a little bit of bad news on my end at the end of the month. So you guys know I play D&D at this bar, right? Yeah. We know. <laughs> well, unfortunately, the bar where I play is going to be closing at the end of this month. Um, luckily, the D&D group has found another um, we're, we're looking for other locations. We're still going, you know, we're all in, we're all chatting with each other. It's fine. But it's just a real shame because you have this, like, it was like a nerd VR bar. There's a lot of like trading card games and, you know, like I said, D&D. And so it is, and it's also closing the same weekend that C2E2 is happening, which just seems mm-hmm. like a weird <laughs> coincidence. <laughs> People are going to be just out here celebrating all things comic book, sci-fi, yeah, fantasy, video yeah. games, and y'all just going to be mourning. We're going to be very sad. Yeah, so C2E2 is the Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo. It's our Comic-Con, uh, and it is huge. It's massive, going to be at McCormick Place. Um, and so it's just mm-hmm. a full weekend of just like cosplay and uh as you said just like you know all nerd stuff under the sun there will be comic book stuff and fantastic nostalgia oh yeah great appearances christopher lawyer from back to the future gonna be up in there yeah yeah and so um i'm hopeful that i i probably will not be going to c2e2 but i think a lot of my friends will and a lot of people i know um will be mourning our our poor bar um at the at the convention um and so yeah definitely something i am uh watching out for um something i am actually planning to go to though is finally going to see uh, Sweet Gnome Chicago, the flower show at the Lincoln Park Conservatory. Uh, You actually wrote a guide to the flower shows in our newsletter, Mm -hmm. which you can find at chicago.citycast.fm. And the minute I heard there were going to be 300 gnomes hidden around the conservatory, I was like, I'm in. I have to go. I need to find them all. (laughs) You going to buy one? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Almost assuredly, I will. (laughs) Yeah. That progression was great. I, I'm I'm super excited about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I so I'm headed to that um this week. We'll drop a link in the show notes for you. Uh this this month I'm I'm excited for a few things. First and foremost, baseball season is back. Right. Today is the home opener for the Cubs. The Sox are going to be playing against the Braves. And while I'm not the, the biggest baseball fan, mostly because it's 160 plus games, y'all. That it's a lot. That's a lot of games, man. It's hard to to stay invested the whole time. But like that first four weeks, I'm there. That there's like a middle part somewhere in like late July, August, I'm there. And then of course October. I'm always around, but I just appreciate the energy that it brings to the season. Even if both teams suck, the rivalry talk is fantastic. It's relatively a cheap option if we're thinking comparatively to maybe some of the other professional sports teams in Chicago. Like, again, I said the Sox play the Braves today. I saw tickets for as little as $4 before you account for those fees. So you might be paying some like $10, $12. Now, the Cubs, on the other hand, because it's the home opener, the lowest ticket I saw was like $60. But by the time they're playing the Dodgers this weekend, the the tickets are somewhere around like $40 again. And so it's a good time. Trust us, both parks have their pros, you know, good food, great fan experience. Uh, and so that's th- just that energy in the city I'm really looking forward to. It does feel like the beginning of summer when baseball season starts, right? right? Like you're just like, oh, maybe we made it past the worst of the worst of the winter. And we're really, we're really coming out here, you know? Mm-hmm. Michelle, you trying to grab a hot dog at one of the one of the parks this summer? Oh, I'm definitely going to see the Sox. And I'm trying mm-hmm. to have the whole experience. Like, I want to get there early. I want to <laughs> do a proper tailgate. Take pictures with all the statues. Exactly. Just, like, catch a good start of the summer vibe. People do a lot in that little parking lot space. You know, the, the Sox right now is complaining they ain't got enough going on around the stadium. Hey, give a shout out to them parking lots. It's, it's a party before every game. No, it's because they don't have enough going on in the stadium where you're paying them now, directly. We know what it, I, I was saying, you know, what they selling us, right? What 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 the narrative yes. is. Yes. We, we know what it really is. Um, another major event that I haven't been able to get to over the last few years is Expo Chicago. And next week is Expo Chicago Art Week. 
Essentially, it's a huge art fair at Navy Pier that runs April 11th through the 14th with some of the dopest galleries. And this year, I'm feeling like I can get in there because it's not just visual art. It's dance and performance art. It's panelists all around the city. Um, and their South Side programming looks really good. On April 9th, the DuSable Museum is doing a tour of the art of our storytellers selections from the Johnson Publishing Company collection, which looks really dope. And then later that evening, the Smart Museum at U Chicago has a performance of Meiji Modern 50 Years of New Japan, which is looking at the tradition of Japanese drumming alongside Chicago jazz. And, and so that's something I'm really excited to. We'll drop a link to the Expo Art Week map in the show notes, and you'll see all the different galleries happening around the city. And then last but not least, the thing I am usually not even talking about throughout the month of April because it is the last day of April and I try not to bring attention, but it is my birthday month. And this month I'm going to New Orleans. I'm going to be there for the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. And so for the next three and a half weeks, I am basically going to be trying to get prepared for this trip by enjoying New Orleans and Chicago. Places like Anime Tavern uh, in Wicker Park, a restaurant that kind of has a New Orleans jazz feel. You know, I might stop at the Green Meal. I'm not. I'm moving not too far from Buddy Guy's Lounge, and so I might go take in some live blues and some live jazz over the month, just to sort of get me a, a New Orleans primer before I get out there. Have you tried uh, Big Jones up in uh, Andersonville? In Andersonville, no. I uh, I'm trying to get to Luella's. I know they close at the yeah. end of the year. I've seen the Po Boys at Big Jones, um, and so yeah. If if y'all got some suggestions for you know places where I can get a New Orleans uh, parade, live jazz, great oysters type feel in Chicago, that's what I'm going for over the next month before I go down there and get my Keith Leon. So yeah, that that that's my rundown. If anyone's got Rex, maybe they'll text us at seven seven three seven eight zero zero two four six. I see what you did there. That I was a nice little little plug in right there. This episode is brought to you by ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you know how much work it takes to produce something great while dealing with complicated shipping issues. That's why over 130,000 companies have turned to ShipStation an innovative tool that allows you to focus less on shipping and more on building your brand. With ShipStation, you can manage orders, label printing, reporting, and customer service on one easy-to-use dashboard. You'll reduce warehouse costs with reliable enterprise solutions and save thousands on shipping costs with discounts up to 89% off. Plus, you can effortlessly import orders from everywhere you sell online. So, Turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. Go to ShipStation.com and use code POD to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code POD. Obviously, the month of April is so much more than just these great events that we went through. And the best place for you to to stay tapped into all of the great events happening around the city of Chicago is by subscribing to our daily newsletter. Hey, Chicago, our newsletter editor, Sydney Madden, is the absolute best and is working every day to drop a dose of Chicago in your inbox. Uh, If there are any events you should be looking forward to or news you should be watching. Hey, Chicago has got you covered. The place to find it is at chicago.citycast.fm. You can subscribe. Then it comes to your inbox every morning. It's great. So I think our listeners know by now that we love exploring Chicago's food and drink scene. So, Simone, uh, tell me, what is your personal wish list this month? So, number one, one thing that's going to happen uh, this week even is... uh, so. You guys went a couple weeks ago to try a sweet steak sandwich. Um, people can go back and listen to that episode. It was really lovely. You ate it. Home of the hoagie. Yeah, at home of the hoagie. You went to Jacoby's mom's place uh, and had a great time and made everybody's mouths water. And a friend of mine listened to that episode and he was like, oh, I got to go. I got to go. And I, he's like, Simone, you have a car. I think we should go. I think we should go down. <laughs> and so we have made a plan. And this week uh, we are planning to go down the home of the hoagie. We're going to wait the wait that needs to be waited. <laughs> and we are going to eat a sweet steak. I'm going to get my first sweet steak. I was not there with you guys when you guys went to tape. Uh, so I, know now, you, I know you wanted it. I was really upset about, about it. it. We've talking about it for, for years. years. So I'm going. I'm finally going. We have a plan. My my car is full of gas. We're we're going. Call it in. When you walk in, go directly to the middle line. 
Let them know who you is. They'll say what it do, what it did. Hey, baby, how you doing, sweetheart? You go stand off to the side. They'll call you up for you to pay. You know, then strap in for 45 minutes, make some new friends, listen to people complain, and then then just enjoy a meal on the bun, G. Then enjoy a meal on the bun. It's going to be so good. Remember to take cash. Ooh, Mm -hmm. yes. And antacid. (laughs) Well, speaking of antacid, the other thing that is happening that I'm trying to decide if I'm going to celebrate this week (laughs) is, did you guys know that April 5th is National Deep Dish Pizza Day? What? Deep Dish Pizza? I'm surprised Deep Dish has a specific day, but I'm proud about that. Good for Deep Dish. <laughs> I know. Look at you, Deep Dish. Look at I you, did Deep know. Dish. I, I did know. Before we do these guides, I like to go look up the most random observances and holidays of that month. And National Deep Dish Day just jumps out to you right at the top. And if you ain't from Chicago, you look at that and like, what is that? But if you're from here, right? Like Michelle said. I love, you, that. I love that you. for us. I love that for <laughs> us. Um, we have talked about deep dish on the show. We did sort of a, a true Chicagoans guide to deep dish. And uh, I wouldn't mind like popping over to Pequod's for uh, a little deep dish on on deep on national. Again, this is a national day, guys. This mm-hmm. isn't just in Chicago. This is Yelp's a, number know. one pizza. Oh, yes. Ranked number one by Yelp uh, is is the the Pequod's pizza. Um, I actually just I have some family who's in town from from Detroit and they just went to Gino's East, um, which I actually don't. Okay. I think Gino's East gets a lot of hate as being like a touristy spot. But as far as the like touristy spots downtown goes, it's my preferred spot. I like it over Lou Malnati's or, or Giordano's, but maybe that's just me. I respect that. Jacoby, what about you? What are you planning to trying to eat? this month so this is an interesting one because there was an event that popped up on my calendar that it is apparently the inaugural african caribbean diaspora howard street carnival and so they're gonna have food vendors out there serving up you know jerk chicken goat curry some jollof so i'm i'm really excited to see carnival and rogers park kind of come together and, and what that could look like what that food could look like i hope there's a good turnout um but no, I honestly, I was just very taken. I was kind of shocked, caught off guard, but also like, that sounds very fun. I don't think I'm going to get to go to a, a carnival in the Caribbean anytime soon. And so going up to, to Rogers Park to see what it what it's hitting for uh, would be great. Obviously, later in this summer, uh, the South Side has their African and Caribbean uh, event, but I kind of want to see what Rogers Parks looks like. I mean, Rogers I, Park is, is very diverse, Jacoby. It's, oh, I know. know that. I know that. that I'm not, it's not about diversity. It's more about just like that isn't the first place I think of, mostly because I've been going to Washington Parks, uh, you know, my entire life. So I was just like, Rogers Park putting on a carnival. What that look like? So what, you're gonna going to be you're going to be way up on the far north side while I'm down on the far south side. Yes, we're, gonna we're, be we're going ships. to pass each other uh, <laughs> as you're on your way to get your sweet steak and I'm on my way. Uh, to go see what the turn up at Carnival is all about. Michelle, what about you? What are you looking forward to this month? Sticky Kiss Cinnamon Rolls, which is a walk-up bakery in West Town, just opened. And I love cinnamon rolls. They're also specializing in banana pudding, which I am a huge fan of. So I definitely want to check it out. Me too. So that's that's a place that I will for sure be going and trying. And then another spot is the restaurant uh, Bracero. Uh, it opened back in February um, from the team at El Che. It's a Latin American spot in West Town as well. Um, the Infatuation described it as great for upbeat get-togethers of all sizes. And that one of the reasons because they have a lot of like shareable dishes, which I think is cool. I'm always looking for places that like can do kind of sharing menus i really love sharing with people i hate whenever i go on a dinner and i get something and then like my friend got something better and i was like damn i should have got that give me that okay but is that is it better or worse than when you go to a restaurant with a friend and they get the same thing as you so then i went to bravari last week on a suggestion from our friends at the infatuation and me and taylor both got the lamb jobs g it was fantastic i I, because i had the first bite and i didn't want to share mine so i'm glad that she got the exact same thing. And so it, it really depends. I, I do like some good tapas, some good shareables, but sometimes it depends. Nah, ain't going to be none of that. Give me that. Give me that. No, definitely. But the I think to be the best scenario is when you have someone who like, you know, you guys are going to share. So you're like, okay, if my meal isn't that good, I know they're going to be nice enough and give me some of theirs and we can share. 
a, but one of the main reasons that caught to my attention is because they have a caipirinha, um, which caipirinha is cachaça, a sugar blend, and muddled limes. It's one of my favorite cocktails, and I've never really had a good one here. I studied abroad in Brazil, and that was my first time having it, and so I've been longing for one. I haven't made mm. it, haven't made it back to Brazil since, but. A good caipirinha, I just think it's also just kind of like getting me ready for the summer. And so that's somewhere that I will for sure check out. No, those were two of the best suggestions uh, that came out of that new restaurants you should be watching out for a list from our friends over at the infatuation you mentioned that banana pudding obviously there are a ton of places that are known for their banana pudding in chicago like magnolias for example but on that list there was also dawn's which just opened up in Hyde park not too far from me and apparently they banana pudding supposed to be really good so so i'm interested uh we will drop a link in the show notes to that list as well and please go back and listen to all of our episodes with our friends john and adrian from the infatuation uh we love food just as much as they do Every month we like to do a little bit of trivia in our monthly guides just to, you know, in addition to, to great events, we get to have a little fun and learn something. And because it's April Fool's Day, um, Jacoby, you had the idea of doing two truths and a lie. Uh, which I think is really fun. Um, so just as a reminder to anyone who doesn't remember the rules, uh, two truths and a lie. What's going to happen is I'm going to say three statements and you're going to tell me which one is the lie. Two of the statements will be true. One of the statements will be a lie. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to have you buzz in. Wait till I read all three statements before you answer. Sound good? Yep. Yep. Okay. So question number one, uh, it's spring. That means it's construction season. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to do one about uh, Chicago streets. So here are three statements about Chicago streets. I never know where you're going to pull from. I love that we just go general and let you figure it out. Because I promise to God I thought through like 12 scenarios. And you just said it's spring, construction, streets. Like, <laughs> thanks for thanks for showing me your work. Thanks for showing your work so I know how you're going to get down, G. <laughs> when, when I started here, I feel like I would kind of just go look at like month trip like just like history like read a quick little history thing i don't even prepare anymore because i'm just like there's no point i don't even prepare g i couldn't even think about how to prepare there's no point i come in raw just raw ready for whatever simone's gonna throw at me i'm just ready to learn all right so here are three here are three statements three statements about chicago streets you guys should know this you you get around the city clark street runs from north to south Pulaski Road runs from north to south. Milwaukee Avenue runs diagonally from northwest to southeast. I got it. Okay, Michelle, what is it? The Clark Street one. It doesn't run north to south. It runs diagonally. That is correct. There are 10 major diagonals on Chicago's grid. Yes, Clark Street is one of those diagonals. They're all, and they, they, you know, they're little, their history, right? Their significance, right? Their significance to Chicago's indigenous communities. Yes, yes. Uh, a lot of the the major um, the diagonals were uh, traditionally Native American uh, path trails um, that we sort of then built over uh, when we started to create the grid. Okay, uh, we have a couple of environmental holidays coming up in April: uh, Earth Day, Arbor Day uh, on the twenty second and twenty sixth, respectively. So here is a question about. Some holidays, some days. Earth Day was founded in Wisconsin. Arbor Day was founded in Illinois. May Day was inspired by events in Chicago. Buzz. Jacoby. I'm going to go the Arbor Day one isn't true. Wisconsin feel like an Earth Day place for some reason. And I know May Day got something to do with us. That is correct. Uh, Arbor Day was founded in Nebraska by J. Sterling Morton in the 1800s, uh, though it took a while to spread to the rest of the country. Is that the same Morton Arboretum guy? So Morton was a newspaper editor and the father of Joy Morton, who founded the Morton Salt Company in Chicago and the Morton Arboretum in Lyle. Ah, look at that word association. There you go. There you go. All right. Question number three. And I'm going to word this. This one is worded slightly differently. You mentioned baseball season, Jacoby, so we've got a baseball question. 
Before the formation of the National and American Leagues and, of course, the MLB, Chicago had a variety of professional, semi-professional, minor, amateur teams. Which of these was not one of Chicago's teams of the early 20th century? The Chicago Federals, the Chicago Keeleys, the Chicago Whales. Buzz. What's that? The Chicago Keeleys. I don't even know what that means. Keeley. Is that like Shorty from Tia Lasso? No, that's incorrect. Michelle? <sighs> I'm going to go, this is, this, I'm going to go none. You think it's a trick question? I think it's a trick question. You're right. Because I feel like, oh, you know why I guessed that? Why? I did Chicago History Fair when I was a sophomore, 2014. Uh There was a kid next to me who was doing a project (laughs) on baseball. And for some reason, I remember multiple names. And I don't know, I I just thought it was April Fool's, so I thought you were going to like catch us in some way. You're right. It's it's this is my my April Fool's joke on you. I'm I'm glad you knew how shysty she really was, Michelle, and you prepare for that shystiness. This is the first ever trick question. The Federals, the Keeleys, and the Whales were all the same team, all refer to the same team that played in the Federal League, which started out as a minor league and then tried to become a third major league between 1913 to 1915. They like didn't have an official name. So for a while, they were just the shy feds. And then they were the Keeleys after the manager and then uh, took on the whales as their as their moniker. Uh, So Michelle, with two out of three, correct, even with laggy Internet. I would have got in that second one if my Internet didn't lag. So (laughs) (laughs) you have for the first time, I think. First time. This is the first time Jacoby has lost. In a trivia competition on CityCast Chicago, Jacoby, how are you feeling? You got you to gotta expect, expect it's coming. You know, with every great win comes probably about four or five losses. So you take it on the chin. So, so Jacoby, uh, I actually have a confession to make that you've been double tricked on <laughs> today's trivia. <laughs> what's, the, what's the second trick for? The second trick is I gave Michelle all the answers ahead of time. <laughs> And you still got one of them, so there you, you go. Still got one you of still them. beat me. That changes the whole game. Y'all ain't shit, boy. <laughs> y'all ain't shit. I ain't saying we appreciate y'all making time on nothing today. Get out of here, some old Ali say executive producer. Go home, it's producer April Michelle Fools. Navarro. What did you want? What I told you, I don't like surprises. I don't like April Fools. Smack anybody who play an April Fools joke on me. No, nah, get out of here, executive producer, producer. Uh, no, that is a fantastic trick. I appreciate you doing that because, Michelle, you still sold it as you was pulling these answers out of your ass. Oh, I don't even prepare anymore. I just I just come in raw and ready to go. You liar. And you laugh. You ate that up. So <laughs> I don't know what to tell y'all. <laughs> you ate it up. I did go to Chicago History Fair. I don't know nobody <laughs> who did no project on this, though. <laughs> you ain't- Double, like you may extra lies to sell your initial lie. You know what? We appreciate all of y'all listening today. Make sure you check our show notes so you can find all of our restaurant options, all of the events we're looking forward to, and everything in between. Maybe you'll also find the answers for next month's trivia game since I'm the only one who's not in on it. I want to give a huge thank you to executive producer Simone Alisea. Thanks, Jacoby. I want to give a thank you to our producer and trivia winner, Michelle Navarro. Thanks, Jacoby. Before we let you go, one last reminder. Stay tapped into all CityCast Chicago has to offer by bookmarking our website, chicago.citycast.fm. We've been talking about it throughout the episode. The CityCast Chicago ecosystem is deep. We got a podcast, a newsletter, membership, and a website, and it's all here to make us more engaged Chicagoans at the end of the day. If you're new to CityCast Chicago, we hope you're rocking with us. We're going to be here bright and early tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. Peace. We love you, Sid. She went to Whitney Young. She's smart. <laughs> you funny, it adds authority. People are going to be like, damn, she did go to Whitney Young. <laughs>